is Morten Amundsen. And I'm from Norway. I'm currently working, uh, living and working in, uh, from Italy. So I've been with Teleperformance Nordic since 2003 as a web developer, where I do uh, PHP and Asterisk and uh, mainly web services. Um, and Teleperformance is a contact center provider from France, which exists in about uh, 76 countries, and we have about 220,000 employees today. Um, I'm doing uh, my work for the Nordic countries, which is uh, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, and Finland. So, um, what I want to do, uh, I want to show how to set up a call center with PHP and uh, Vue.js. So we're going to configure asterisk for the agents and the callers, uh, create a PHP process that can communicate with asterisk over the AMI, the manager interface. Uh, the web page is going to connect to our server with a web socket. Uh, we're going to have a little reporting module, um, and then we're going to keep the state of the call center uh, in Redis. And then we're going to have a dashboard in Vue.js where we can show all our, all our uh, statistics. And then uh, finally, I have a short um, section on how to deploy this to a uh, um, VM with the Ansible. So the overview of the, the solution that we have is uh, we have a, a dashboard over here in the HTML uh, JavaScript, which has a WebSocket connection to our uh, server. And then uh, from uh, the asterisk part, we connect with a manager interface. And then we have our callers and our agents calling in like this. And uh, now I just create the pairs automatically. So uh, anybody that calls on 011 become an agent. Um, and then you can also log off with 022. And for, for all of um, the events that happen in the dial plan or in asterisk, we send the events down of the manager interface to our backend server so that we can create statistics and send the information back up to the web page. And also from here, we have uh, a button that we can set the agent available or in pause. And that goes through our uh, web socket, through the server, updates the statistics, and, and does the right thing in the in asterisk. Then we have statistics uh, writing to our Redis backend in case the server uh, needs to restart. And then we also have our reporting file. So everything here is um, just uh, a regular installation of uh, Ubuntu 18.04 uh, where I installed asterisk 13. And I changed very little of the there's very little configuration of asterisk. Just a zip to have an endpoint that we can call HTTP so that we can serve the, um, the dashboard. The manager configuration for the, for the manager, conf uh, manager interface connection. The queues for our call center queue and then uh, extensions conf is our uh, dial plan. So <clears throat> in the dial plan, we have three numbers. Just one for the call center, one for uh, agent login and agent logout. And um, let's show first the call center. It's very simple. We uh, before we um, send the call to the queue, we just push a hang up handler and then send an event to our um, server process in the background, so we can know about this caller. And then we queue the call and then just. Uh, and it waits there. And when it hangs up, it, uh, the, the call continues here, and then we send an event to our server about the caller hang up. We check the member interface from the queue application to see if um, we were actually talking to somebody. And then if we, uh, so this variable will be filled with the interface of the, the agent. And if uh, we did talk to somebody, we just unpause that queue member immediately so that he's ready for the next call. Uh, the login, uh, we're just going to use the, the peer name of the channel as an agent ID for this uh, um, example. We create a, a channel, a queue member, which is a local channel at this context. 
And then we add this queue member to our uh, call center queue. And then we, uh, we immediately pause it so that he doesn't get any calls uh, initially. And then we send a user event to our backend process saying that now we have a new agent with this agent ID, with this uh, uh, interface. Yeah. And then we play a message saying that we logged in. And for the logout, it's basically the same, except we just do the remove queue member and then send a logged out event to our backend process. And then finally, when we do get uh, an agent and a caller connected, since uh, we used uh, this ID as the, uh, we automatically created the pair, so we can just, uh, this extension that we get connected on is the agent ID, agent ID so we just call that uh, directly. So I wanted to try to, um, to demo this, see if that works. So, I have my own little uh, Wi-Fi set up, and I'm going to use one phone um, as an agent. I called 011. So agent logged in, and then I'm also I'm going to use the other phone as a um, caller. So I call 113. I don't think. I have to do like this. We have Alice in So we're waiting in queue. So now I'm just going to go here and I'm going to set this available. So when I do that, there's a message over the WebSocket down to the, our server process and then that gets passed on back to the to asterisk. This is calling. And now we have a connection between the two and we have the and now you can also see that this I'm just gonna hang up. The statistics is um, updating on the top there. So if I call one one three let's see, let's set this post. I call one one three. And if I hang up, the abandoned call should go up every time we do this one one three. Gone. And then we're going to log out this agent, and it's gone. So that works. Let's see. Let's see. Mm. Go back to the slides. Okay, so the PHP server, it is using uh, mainly uh, three libraries. Uh, it's using the React PHP for the manager interface connection for the asynchronous I.O. Then there's a library called Ratchet that does the WebSocket connection. Ratchet is built on top of uh, using a lot of the parts of React PHP. And then there's uh, Piami, uh, which does the encoding of the, the actions and the events from, um, from Asterisk, the text, and, the, and makes it into PHP uh, objects. And then Redis, we use to store the states. <coughs> so what we do, we first create a, a, an, an IO loop, and then uh, we create a new Ratchet application um, on the host name that we would like our clients to connect to on port 8080. It binds to, uh, to all interfaces. And then we connect this uh, Ratchet app to our event loop. And uh, after that, we have to have a, a, an application, a handler for our um, uh, events, our messages from the the web page, and we, so we create a route called call center, and uh, everything that uh, we get here gets passed to our WebSocket handler. 
And then here we are going to say that we, uh, we allow all hosts to connect to, to this route. Then uh, we connect to, to asterisk uh, on the manager interface, and we create, um, which is wrapped in this duplex resource stream uh, on the same loop as the WebSocket. And then we have our own uh, implementation of how to handle these events, and we pass this connection in, in here. Then we have our report writer, and then finally our Redis connection. And then we have uh, our full call center application that needs uh, to use all of these four objects here, WebSocket Handler, the Asterisk Manager, Report Writer, and Redis. So, and then finally, we, uh, we wire up all the events that can come from the WebSocket and also f um, from the Asterisk Manager into our own call center object. So when we get the WebSocket hello, which is when you start the dashboard or you press F5, we get the hello. We pass that to our call center WebSocket hello method that knows what to do with that message. Uh, and also the button, avail button, that goes to, to call center WebSocket set agent avail. Then we have the asterisk messages here for the agent, the caller, and also the, the connection between agent and caller. And finally, we, we log into the manager interface, and then we start running our um, loop. Um, so I'm just going to go through a couple of the events and uh, how we handle them. So for the WebSocket avail, that is uh, the button that uh, we have on the agent. So it comes in like that. We, we send that to our WebSocket avail method, and what it does, it, it gets or creates uh, an agent um, with the, we have some um, um, properties on that event, like agent ID and member. So we use that to either get the one that we have or create a new one. And then we pass this member onto the manager interface directly here in the, this WebSocket handler. Uh, when a new caller comes in, we create um, a new call, and then all we do, we, <clears throat> we tell all the connected WebSockets, uh, all the dashboards connected, that we have a new call. So we just uh, serialize the call, uh, the call object, and then we also pass along with it the, the current statistics. So every time something happens, we also send the, the new statistics. And then finally, here's the queue connect. Uh, we get we have a, in that event we get an agent ID and the unique ID of the caller. Uh, so we we get those two uh, models uh, objects out, and then we set the status on them to in call both of them. We pass the the queue of the call it gets passed onto the agent so that we know what, which one we're in. Then we create a new connection object with those two uh, with the call and the agent. And then um, we store it, and then we send to all the dashboards that uh, we now have uh, an agent, a call, and a connection. And again, we calculate uh, and send the statistics. If now there was uh, some kind of screen pop, uh, this is where you would uh, implement uh, to do that. So maybe you would have another uh, WebSocket from all of the agent's computers. And here you could send an event back to those computers with who the caller was, and that machine could do the, do the right thing. So the reporting file that I've implemented is very simple. It's just a CSV file with the, um, the timestamp, who the event uh, was uh, regarding, the agent or the call, the ID of it, uh, the status, and the duration of this event. And this um, can be used to make some kind of statistics for other purposes. The dashboard is, is built with <coughs> Vue.js. So initially, I, I wanted to, um, to try one of these new um, reactive web um, JavaScript frameworks. So I was looking at React and Angular and also Vue. 
And I chose this, and I, I found it to be the, the easiest one for me to just get up quickly. Um, and also, I'm using uh, Bootstrap for the, the layout here, the CSS, since I'm not capable. <laughs> and then uh, uh, the WebSocket connection here. So in the View app, in the, in the, what you do, you just create a new uh, application. You tell it what the ID of the div that you want to connect it to. And then you have this data um, collection here, which are the, uh, the things that are going to be reactive. Anything that changes here is going to make the, the thing repaint. Uh, so, and this is where we're going to put our calls, our agents, our connection, our and our statistics. We're going to fill in here. And every time we change some data in here, we're going to, the page is automatically going to repaint. So when this thing is mounted to the web page, we connect to our backend uh, server, uh, PHP server process. <clears throat> and the first thing we do is to just to send hello. And then we know that when we get a hello in the backend, we're supposed to respond with the state of the, the call center. And that message comes back here as, um, as many lines of uh, JSON. And we just split them up and we, uh, we update the UI for each of these uh, JSON objects. So this is how the, the HTML looks. This is where we said we're going to connect. This ID app is the same as here. And then we have uh, HTML, which is not really HTML, I guess, because it gets parsed by view. And here we have our, uh, some special tags in the page that the view is going to uh, change. Um, it has components for it. It knows what to do with these tags. Uh, and there's a template for each one of these. So for example, call, it's going to loop over all calls. So when it says v4 call in calls, it's going to create a loop over all of the calls in this collection here. And then for each of them, it's going to uh, use the template with the, this object passed in. Um, so call, so for each one, let's see, okay, the component call, it expects to get a call object, which is here, this one here. And for each one, it's gonna uh, use this template. And this template is, is this one. And here, since we get the call object, we have the call, the caller ID, the status, and the queue. Um, and this is the update UI method, uh, which, when it gets all these JSON objects, it's going to uh, parse it. It's, first of all, it's text, so it's going to parse it into JSON. And if it, if it's, um, it parses into a JSON object, it's going to check the type, and then it's going to do an uh, update. If, if it's an agent, it updates the agent, call, call, connect, connection. And for stats, it is just one object. It's just gonna, it's just gonna exchange the object that is already there with a new one. Uh, and here are the, the methods that are gonna update the, the collections. So for a call, it's gonna check if it's a hang up or an abandon. Uh, and if it is, it's just going to remove that call from the collection of, our, of calls. And also, it, uh, it's going to delete it from the connections. So I've, what I've done, I've used the same ID for the connection of the, uh, as the call, so that I know that this call ID is also the ID of the, the connection. So I can delete that as well. Uh, for any other um, type, it's going to add that call to our... Um, collection. So for agents, it checks if it's logged out. If it's logged out, it deletes it. And then if not, it just adds uh, that um, agent to the collection. And for connection, it always just adds one. And here we don't have to worry about deleting because that gets, when the call goes away, the connection goes away. And this is what these um, JSONs look like that comes from the PHP backend. It's just um, this, 
um, I just take one, for example, the call. It has an ID, which is the unique ID from asterisk, caller ID, the status, what queue it's currently in, the time, and if it's answered or not. And here are the statistics. We have, so we have uh, received, and we also calculate here um, the average handle time, average queue time, abandon time, and also the SLA. So I think I, I just made a little uh, calculation that it was, uh, um, the call had to be answered within 30 seconds. So it would just calculate that. Quick question. Yes. Uh, have you ever experienced where you don't get a unique ID? No. During a call process? No. no. I have in this situation. Wow. Okay. What no. could cause it? I, I have no idea. No idea. Yeah. Um, okay, and finally, um, I also wanted to, to use uh, Ansible to, to get all of my code from my uh, laptop to the server that I was going to run this on, which is, for now is just a, a virtual box with uh, another Ubuntu on it. So uh, it does um, automatically install of the PHP and the asterisk. It copies all the files in place. Um, and then it reloads uh, the asterisk and starts the, uh, restarts the CTI server that we have here. So just show a little bit how it works, like uh, the command. So I've from before I've in does the, done an um, installation of Ansible, which gives us this Ansible playbook command. And then you give it um, a set of tasks to do. Uh, and then you also provide it an inventory of machines that is going to apply these uh, tasks to. So this uh, called production. The production uh, contains a group of machines where I only have one machine in the asterisk group. And then in your uh, list of tasks, you say that um, you're going to do all of this on the group of machine called asterisk. So this, this here. And then here I've cut out just uh, cut up most of it, but here's one task that I left in, which is the copying of the, the um, asterisk conf configuration files that I have on my laptop, and it synchronizes that with the destination folder, the etc asterisk uh, destination folder on the other side. When it's done that and it's successful, it's going to notify our handler, reload asterisk, and when all of the tasks are successful, this handler gets called one time. And what that does is uh, asterisk core reload. Um, thank you. Um. <laughs>